broadcast now. So we are recording now. So hello everyone. Welcome to One Million Cups for Word. We are so happy that you are here with us today. We're going to give some people some time to sign in and then we're going to get this party started. <laughs> Get your coffee, get your tea, get your vodka. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Five o'clock somewhere. That's right. <clears throat> right. And then let me see if I can go ahead and try this Facebook thing. Technical difficulties here because I'm challenged. I got four minutes to get it right. Good morning, Christopher. Good morning, folks. Good How morning. are you? Um, just really want to post your video. Okay. Christopher, good morning. Okay, it says preparing live streaming preview. Hi, Frankie. The boat looks different today. Yes, she does. <laughs> I'm just an intern. I don't know. It just came on as her name. <laughs> it's fine. I'm actually Reagan. Hi, Reagan. <laughs> Nice to meet you. Nice to meet y'all too. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't steal her link. This is the one that they sent me. Maybe I'll have to create my own link. You're fine. Okay, Frankie, good morning. <laughs> How so are you, I'm Frankie? I'm pretty sure you're not Sandra. That the, the guy who just joined is Brian Perry. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it doing that? I forgot to say it's Freaky Fridaying today. <laughs> <laughs> Sandra, you grow a beard. I know. I forgot to shave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know how to change that, don't you, Brian? Yeah, I can get okay. There. Yeah. But if unless you, you just okay. unless you just want to be Sandra. <laughs> well, well, five months of being at home, you want to try something new. It's not unreasonable. <laughs> yep, you got it. <laughs> So, Frankie, technical question. When I hit the go live button for Facebook, will we automatically go live or will it take a few minutes? It should go live right then. Yeah. Okay. Like, it might take a second for it to load, but it should start at the point that you hit okay. live. So, don't do it before you're ready. No. And uh, you're going to monitor it for yes. participants? Okay. I'm glad that Steve noticed that. I thought we were just doing something wrong every week. Well, we were. We were. I, was. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to hit go live now. Okay. Steve says he's on. I mean, um, Bob says he's on. So I'm going to give him a new link. So you go for it. Okay, it's not doing what I wanted to do. I'm going to get off. Okay, I don't know why it's not doing what I wanted to do. I hit go live and tried to give it a title, but okay. So, okay, good morning, everyone, and welcome to One Million Cups Fort Worth. We are so glad you took time out of your busy day to grab a cup of coffee, tea, or vodka, and join us as we support other entrepreneurs in our community. So my name is Deidre Kendrick, and I would like to share my screen with you. And we are going to get this party started. And go. Okay, One Million Cups, we caffeinate entrepreneurs nationwide every Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. 
The Kauffman Foundation was um, works to help communities in entrepreneurship and educate to increase the opportunities that allow people to learn, take risks, and be their own success in business. The mission is to lower the barriers of access to educational resources and to connect entrepreneurs all over the United States. We are nationwide and local, so meaning we have 170 plus communities all over the United States and in some other countries where we come together every Wednesday morning and we highlight the uniqueness of your position in your local communities. Our key pillars are presentations, not pitches. So if you've seen Shark Tank, that's not us. We're more like a dolphin tank. So we come and we connect, we educate, and we lower the barriers for all entrepreneurs all over the United States. You can apply to present. It is not a sales pitch. It is a presentation, meaning that it's an educational presentation on what your business is, how you are changing the world, what are your goals, and what are your hurdles, and you come together in front of like-minded individuals, and we help one another out. And without further ado, I am going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to introduce some of our other organizers. So my name is Deidre Kindred. All the organizers are volunteers. Sandra Barron is one of the co-lead organizers and my partner in crime. So let's give her a hand. Yay. Hi, William. Speaking of, William, William got a new haircut. Hey. <laughs> William Sampson is also an organizer for One Million Cups for Word. Joe Barron is Sandra's other half. He's also an organizer for One Million Cups for Word. We have LeBeau Colbert. Hi, say hi, LeBeau. I love you. you look different today. <laughs> She's also yeah. another organizer. We have Connie Allison, who is an organizer for One Million Cups for Word. Say hi, Connie. Good morning, everyone. We also have Christopher Bronner, who is a wonderful organizer for One Million Cups for Worth. We have Darlisa Diltz, who just joined us as an organizer for One Million Cups for Worth. All our organizers are entrepreneurs, so we all come together from different backgrounds. We have Frankie Simmons, who's an organizer for One Million Cups for Worth. So hopefully she's running our Facebook live. <laughs> And who did I forget? Williams, um, I got William. And we have none other than Steve Rosenbaum. He allows us to use the Zoom platform and our platform to run our One Million Cup every week. And we got another Sandra Aaron that just joined. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> That's Bob. Oh, hi, Bob. Morning, sorry, I'm having some technology challenges early. Soon. That's okay, that's okay. Well, welcome, welcome. So today we have an amazing presenter, two presenters actually. One is gonna be an educational presentation and the first one is gonna be Joshua Traeger, Art Articulate. Did I get Josiah. that right? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Josiah Joseph. Traeger. Don't worry. Okay, so with Art Articulator, he's gonna have six minutes to present on his company and what they're doing. And then he'll have 20 minutes of Q&A from the entrepreneur community. Anyone who is an attendee, please put your questions and answer, uh, your questions or comments in the Q&A box. All others can uh, put their comments or questions in the, Q in the chat box. So he'll have six minutes, I'll let him know once his down to one minute and then we'll go into our Q&A and Connie will run that. So without further ado, I'm going to hush up and turn it over to Josiah. Thank you. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Um, my name is Josiah Traeger. We're here to talk to you about Art Articulator. Um, it's a new platform that gives fine art sellers, artists, and galleries the opportunity to showcase their inventory in a buyer's own home in true scale using augmented reality. I'm gonna start with a short 30 second video. Art Articulated, the augmented reality fine art solution, connecting you with real time inventory of countless galleries and artists right on your own wall. Art Articulated, helping you find art that fits your life and your space. 
go from looking for art to looking at art in no time. Art Articulator. Now art lives where you do. And then, all right. So um, for those not familiar with the fine art market, I'm just going to give you a very brief overview. Fine art has sold over $50 billion every year for the last 10 years, with seven of those last 10 years um, having annual sales exceeding $60 billion. So well over half a trillion dollars in sales in the past 10 years alone. It's a niche market, but it's a very valuable market and one that's perfectly ripe for disruption. Um, the US accounts for 45% of the total global market. And when you add the UK and China, those three countries alone account for over 80% of the fine art sales every year. As is true with almost every other retail space, the industry has organically been transitioning online with about 9% of the total market sales being made online every year. Um, for the most part, fine art sales have not really evolved and the industry suffers from two main inefficiencies. First, there's no centralized marketplace. Imagine the real estate market, but with no MLS or Zillow. Every broker has only a handful of unique listings and any buyer who's looking to buy a house would have to make actual contact with each of those brokers to see what their inventory was. There's no way that every buyer would know all about the inventory in that manner. That's in essence what the fine art model market actually is. It's millions of pieces of art spread across thousands of galleries and even more unrepresented artists. And when a buyer is looking to buy a piece of art, they literally have to stumble around blind until you find something you like and then see if it fits. Which brings us back to the other main inefficiency. You can either be in your home or in your office looking at a blank wall saying this wall needs a piece of art, or you can be out at a gallery or an art fair or just looking around online, but you can never really be in the same place at the same time trying to get a piece of art on the wall. So how did we solve this? Well, first, starting in the spring of last year, we set out to develop the key to our technology, which is showcasing the fine art in true scale. For anyone familiar with the augmented reality technologies, you'll know that the accuracy of the size is rarely a concern, but that can't work for us. Our system detects your wall and measures the size to place your art in the wall in true scale. The image on the left on this screen is from the actual screen capture of the app in use. The main photo is the piece of art hanging on the same wall, just like we did in the video. Unlike other online art websites, which don't have any of this true to scale augmented reality feature, they also use a subscription model for their providers. It's essentially another rent. Our model uses a cost free, risk free adoption so that fine art retailers, galleries, and artists can list their inventory on our system for free and we'll provide them with a series of features that they would otherwise have to pay for. So yes, we'll take a commission on every sale we make, but both buyers and sellers get more security for the transaction with all sorts of lower associated costs than they would have without us. Buyers get to see a far larger inventory from essentially limitless providers, and they get to truly experience what the art would look like before they buy it. Our robust search feature already allows artists, uh, I mean, uh, buyers to search for art but we'll be expanding this by adding artificial intelligence that will help buyers see things that they might like based on things that they've already seen and decided that they liked. And as we said, we're offering it to the sellers in a risk-free place to showcase their inventory. We're already offering a free inventory management system. And as we expand, we'll be able to um, replace their costly websites with a free branded website within our platform where they'll be able to post video and other content about themselves and they'll be able to import their Instagram feed directly into the page. So as I mentioned, um, about $6 billion worth of fine art is sold online every year. For every 1% of those online sales, which again amounts to one one-tenth of a full percentage point of the total market is we're talking about $60 million in annual sales. 
we fully expect that the percentage of online market will grow organically and likely that increase will uh, be expedited as a result of the pandemic. But a respectable 8% of just the online market sales is nearly half a billion dollars. Um, and that still means 92% of the sales are, are not, and 99% of all sales are not through our platform. So I have less than a minute to go. Um, our, my co-founder, Brian Perry, is here. Um, I don't want to spin through everything. Some of our competition about uh, large-scale, high-end items being sold through AR and some online um, fine art sellers, which I mentioned are uh, subscription-based model, but nobody has what we have. Um, these are some things that we're looking to do as we expand and scale uh, rapidly over the next few months. Um, hopefully, we'll become a huge company, but if not, there's definite places for an exit strategy. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to take them now. All right, Connie. Thank you, Josiah. That was fantastic. Thank um, you. So for our attendees, if you have any questions, if you'll put those in the Q&A box, I'll get those out to Josiah. And for all of our um, organizers, if you have questions, if you want to put them in the chat box, that would be wonderful. Uh, Josiah, um, so you're doing this all commission-based, is that correct? That is correct. And what is your commission split? Well, we're starting with a 10% for galleries and 25% for unrepresented artists. But our plan is to uniformly uh, join those at 15%, which will put a lot of pressure on artists to abandon the gallery model and a lot of pressure on galleries to figure out how to, to make money when they're not going to be the direct seller. And uh, our overhead beyond that is relatively low. We're going to be handling things like insurance and shipping. Um, but our gross revenue rate at the consolidated 15% is still expected to be over 10%, even after credit card fees. Uh, we have a, a deal with a Lloyd's of London subsidiary that will um, insure all of our shipments at half of 1%, which is um, far better with, with no deductible, which is far better than you get from you know, any of the uh, uh, contract shippers by themselves or from anybody else we can get. Um, so again, the economies of scale are what's turning essentially a high commission, low volume individual basis into a consolidated higher volume with lower commissions, but spreading the wealth among all the producers and then frankly for us as well. Okay. And from William Sampson, how do you intend to get artists to subscribe? Well, again, with a risk-free and cost-free adoption method, it's pretty hard to pass up. Um, our goal is, to do, we, you know, we have, uh, again, we, my wife and I were in the gallery business for several years. We have contacts. We already have a roster of artists who are ready to go. Um, but at this point, especially with the pandemic, it's an easy sell to say, if your clients can't come to you, put this system to work for you. Let them look at, at things in their home directly on their own walls. And frankly, um, once you've signed up for an account, now we have information about you that we can start helping you as a buyer directly. So we essentially are creating a free army of sellers to um, offer this solution to their customers, essentially, if you're going to have an otherwise lost sale, this is an opportunity to try to resurrect that lost sale. And even if you don't make the transaction, that initial transaction, through our system, now we have the buyer's data on our system and we're able to deal with them directly. Our favorite piece is, a uh, favorite piece of the puzzle is, show me more like this, is when you're looking at a piece that you've been told to look at and you don't love it, Show me more like this, we'll, we'll show you things from across the system where you'll have to use our system in order to make that technology a purchase. Okay, and from Darlisa, it's how many clients do you currently have? Uh, well, so we are about to launch. Uh, we have 15 artists who are willing to sell um, straight away and we have a, a roster of about 150 more 
who we're going to sign up within the next four to six weeks. Um, and we have our back end, which Brian is here, uh, is, has finishing up the back end for our, our model so that you can add the art directly. We've managed to get it down. So a new piece of art can be added in under a minute. Um, and so assuming that you have 10 to 20 pieces, you're ready to go inside of a half an hour and you can start uh, sending out your own personalized links to the website um, and to the app which will allow you to showcase your piece on Instagram and tell people, hey, if you want to see what it's going to look like, follow this cute uh, bit.ly code and, and you'll be able to download this free app and see what it looks like on your own wall on true scale. But the goal is to raise a little bit of money so that we can do some advertising because one of the things that's important is to turn something into a high volume, low commission means we need to scale and we want to scale quickly. We want to give an opportunity for a lot of galleries and artists who haven't been able to sell uh, in the traditional manner for the last few months, an opportunity to reach back out to their clients, especially people who are now stuck at home and looking at their blank walls and saying, man, I really wish I could put something on there, but how can I possibly figure out how to buy some art right now? Awesome. And kind of piggybacking on what you just said, uh, Casey Fairson is saying, um, thank you for the presentation. And can you explain the sizing, scaling a little more uh, I'm interested how the person using the app will calibrate the AR. All right, so that's actually what makes us um, so advanced. Um, I didn't have an opportunity to talk to you about our uh, lead app developer. His name is Corbin Ordell. He has an interactive telecommunications master, which always makes me laugh because when I was in college, there were no such things as interactive telecommunications, much less a degree that somebody could get a master's in it. Um, so the key is that our app actually does all the heavy lifting for you. You point it at your wall and it will detect your wall and it will detect it enough to measure. And what's actually most interesting is for anybody familiar with uh, augmented reality, the way an app would normally do that is it would find some kind of demarcation point on your wall in order to register those two different points and extrapolate forward. Um, that's very hard on a blank wall. A computer doesn't necessarily know how far away you are from a blank wall. And what our app developer was able to achieve was essentially something called micro points, which it looks for imperfections that the naked eye doesn't even figure out. And from that, it can extrapolate enough data points to figure out how big the entire wall is. So those little boxes that you saw in some of our videos, they're sort of uh, tan boxes are actually what we are calling plane detections or wall detections. That's to let you know that it's figured out what the wall size is and how big it is. And from there, it knows how to put the piece of art in into the right size. Awesome. And uh, from Sandra Barron, uh, what is your story and how did you get started with this? Uh, as I think I mentioned to you right before we started, um, my story is that I was uh, an actor turned lawyer. So I spent about 15 years as a big firm litigator in New York, Los Angeles, and Texas. And um, my wife is also an attorney, but she had a small firm to herself where rather than litigation, she worked in uh, corporate transactions for artists and nonprofits. And several years ago, we decided to pivot away from the law and we opened up an art gallery in Charleston, South Carolina. But the uh, lawyer brains never really shut off. And this uh, company stemmed from a method that we were trying to figure out how to increase sales for our art gallery. And we realized that the best way to interact with our customers was to follow them home. But obviously that's expensive and difficult. Um, with this app, we were able to say, you can now decide when you get home whether or not this piece is gonna look the way you want it to look. So you can measure your wall. It will measure your wall and it will place the piece on there in true scale and you'll decide whether or not it's the right sale for you and then just go ahead and call us. And once we realized how amazing this technology was, we start thinking about licensing it to other galleries, but we realized that what was missing from the industry was the second piece of this, which is the lack of efficiency. Um, there's just, there's literally millions of pieces of art and no one place consolidates them. This has the opportunity to do that. 
because both the risk-free adoption method and the mechanism whereby you can turn your own house into the art gallery. Awesome, thank you. Uh, Casey reminded us if you could put your contact information in the chat box for the attendees, that would be fantastic. Sure. Um, from Joe Barron, uh, what is the price range of the art pieces that are or can be sold on your site? Well, at this point, um, it's limitless, right? It, uh, we are, the, the sweet spot for retail art market is approximately $2,500 to $7,500 a piece. Now, that's um, vague ranges, but um, smaller pieces can go for as little as $100 or $500 and larger pieces can go into the five figures. Um, beyond that, you're starting to deal with people who don't necessarily want to deal with an app yet. Um, and obviously we're not looking to do, or maybe not obviously, we're not planning to start in the secondary market. Uh, this is a retail market solution. The secondary market is, is very rich and ripe for uh, disruption as well. But the players in that, like Sotheby's and um, Christie's, will probably want to defend their market share pretty quickly. So all we're really trying to do is, I dare say, fix the gallery model by allowing the gallery to be in your own home. And from LeBeau, uh, what are you doing for lead generation? So we actually have, um, as part of our gallery, we had several interns this past uh, semester or I guess uh, spring semester. So we have generated um, a series of, of lists of both Instagram based artists who sell directly to customers and um, have gone through major cities and gotten a list of all their galleries. Um, at this point, it's just gonna be a lot of phone calls. It was going to be a lot of in-person demoing, but that's not likely and not really safe during the pandemic. So we've developed a system whereby we can take a piece of your art and give it to you as a preview only mode so that no one can see it on the site or on the app without your approval, but give you an opportunity to say, this is what your piece of art would look like to your customers. Go ahead and put it on your own wall and see how comfortable you are with it. And so again, we also have a uh, demo that can show you how to upload a piece of art in under a minute. Um, and it just requires taking a screenshot picture, uh, or rather a, um, a cropped image that we can help you upload. And it does a lot of the heavy lifting. Brian's here can talk about how it scans for color coding and does a lot of the other sort of uh, enhanced sorting so that if somebody's interested in things that are blue, this will help. The, you don't have to decide that your piece is blue. We'll take care of that. Okay, and looks like Darlisa was looking for a little clarification. So are you B2B and B2C or just B2B? We are B2B2C. We are a marketplace. Um, and, and frankly, that is one of the, the most valuable, but also the most difficult aspects. You need to both bring the sellers to the party and you need to bring the buyers to the party. Um, so from that perspective, that's why we're having a cost-free, risk-free adoption for sellers. You're welcome to sell anywhere you want, but we also would like you to try to sell with us because this gives you an opportunity to do something nobody else does and offer your product directly to your customer in your home. And that's true for galleries or artists. And our idea for bringing customers to the party, um, we've spent the pandemic as a, as a pivot. We're um, we've taken apart the back end and put it back together, allowing museums to offer their pieces um, rather than for sale, but as a donate now button. So that is something that we're going to start offering as soon as we load up. There's plenty of galleries that are hurting for sales, but equally there are museums that are hurting for uh, guests and donations. And so our idea is to allow them to interact with their mailing list by introducing their customers to our piece. These are people who clearly like museums enough to sign up for a mailing list, like art. And now once they're on there looking at their art and possibly donating to the museum, they also have an opportunity to say, well, maybe I want to buy something from it for myself. 
Okay, and uh, from Joe Barron, uh, what type of art, oil, print, photography, et cetera? So right now it's two-dimensional art. Um, and that obviously has its own, within its own scheme can be more three-dimensional than two-dimensional. But for this point, all we're doing is measuring a wall and things that will be hung. But beyond that, um, it's what the sellers want to sell. Um, we as a gallery traditionally worked with um, only oils and acrylics, a little bit of watercolor work as well. Um, but we found that that required being framed in order to sell. That's not a problem for us either, but it's going to be now at this point what the artist wants to sell. Um, one of our future expansions is going to be for three-dimensional works for sculptures, um, but that's a completely different technology that's going to require first about 36 photos of the piece in 360 degrees, and then uh, plane detection for a wall is not going to be the same. We're going to need 3D detection. So, you know, that, that's a one to two year out um, group. But again, right now, as a general rule, you can say that a gallery with a, for every 100 square feet of gallery space, you're looking at about 10 pieces of art. So a large gallery of 2,000 square feet might have 200 pieces of art. We, we can put 200 pieces of art up there in 10 minutes if we have them. So we, we can literally be any city's largest gallery inside of a week with just some phone calls. Okay, and also from Joe, uh, how do you prevent theft of art you send to a customer, false client, hacking, et cetera? So, um, and we've been trying to figure out where our vulnerability points are. And the easiest place that we can figure out our vulnerability points would theoretically be we're actually on the seller side. Because a buyer side, you have to give us money. Once you've given us money, then again, it's possible you've stolen someone's credit card in order to make this purchase. But dare I say, to what end? It's not a television or, or some sneakers that you can then turn around and sell for half the price and it's free money. This is a piece of unique art. So our sellers are sort of our most vulnerable point, which is why they don't get paid until our buyer has, has signed off that it is what it is that they said that they were getting. Um, but again, you know, we have been, we have spent more than a fair time as a mental exercise trying to figure out how to be vulnerable um, to fraud. And frankly, we can't quite figure out how it would be on the buyer side. You have to give us money in order to do something. If you have stolen that money, you know, I dare say good on you, but I'm not entirely sure to what end. Okay, and it looks like all of the questions we have right now. Uh, oh, here's one more. Darlisa uh, asked, uh, you mentioned onboarding an initial 150 post-launch after the initial 15 that you have in the pipeline. Is that number based on research or anticipated based on the industry? So there literally are, uh, at last count, over a million and a half fine artists in the United States alone. Um, these are people who tell the federal government on their tax returns that they do fine art. That's not like graphic designers or some other level within the three and a half million art space community. So it is a lot of people. Um, the 150 that we've hit is that we have a list of close to a thousand uh, artists, either directly or as part of a group of, of galleries for whom we are already in contact with, that we have said, this is what we're planning to do. And they've said, we're interested. So we haven't loaded them up yet because we don't have our system ready for them. We have our back end system ready for them. We're getting app store approval this month to finally do our final launch. Everything that you've seen is part of our, uh, our research and test flight versions. But, and we've expanded that to a bunch of artists and galleries who've given us feedback as well on both the back end sellers portal and the, the buyer side as well. But um, the goal is once we launch, we're gonna launch and do scale very quickly. And as a follow-up, Darlisa is asking, will your business survive if you don't hit that number? Well, the good news is um, we have very little overhead. Um, you're, you know, you're looking at Brian's dining room, I think, and, and definitely <laughs> mine. 
This would be in my home office if I didn't break the desk that I had used on Friday and I'm waiting for a replacement to arrive. <laughs> um, our app developer is uh, currently um, essentially in Canada with family because he was in Los Angeles and he went visiting in March and never was able to return. Um, we are lucky enough to say that our overhead is low. What we are looking for in terms of of resources is we want to scale and in order to scale we're going to need some money for advertising we need some brand recognition we're going to try to do that as a grassroots basis using the museum strategy that we've come up with for every museum that's got you know 3,000 people on their mailing list i'm going to offer them a free way to get that out to their people that that hey you can't come into our museum right now why don't you take a look at some of our newest pieces in scale on your wall at home. If you're gracious enough to donate a dollar afterward, we'd appreciate it. And that's that's how the museum sells it. But for us, in order for them to do that, they've made an account with us. And now we can tell them, hey, if you're ever interested in buying some art, here's some things that you might be interested in based on buttons you've already clicked, things you've already found interesting at the museums. But again, once we got those names and numbers, you know, we, we own them. That's our information. I, I like to talk about this, you know, from a seller's point of view as it's cheaper, it's free, it's uh, all sorts of really useful features that you currently have to pay for. I like to tell people from the buyer's perspective, this is something you can't do anywhere else. You get to have an art gallery in your own home. But the truth is, and the reason I asked Brian to join us is we're a data company. And, you know, for investment purposes, that's very sexy. From a uh, sales perspective, nobody cares. Nobody cares that Amazon or Airbnb are data companies. But if you look at their valuation as an investor, you find that that is something very useful. We don't have to make anything in order to sell everything. Uh, and Brian has spent the better part of the last two decades essentially as a chief data architect for a company that processed one quarter of all mortgages in the United States. So he knows how to take a lot of useful information, consolidate it and put it in a useful place. And in our case, there's one extra piece, which is our app also shows you a picture of, of the image in the right size on the right size wall. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Josiah, for that wonderful presentation. And we always like to close out your presentation. What can the One Million Cups Fort Worth community do for you? Well, again, um, we've recently moved back here. I was in uh, Charleston with the gallery and, and Brian's here in the North Texas area, recently relocated back from, from Boston. Um, we, wanna, we wanna meet the right people. Um, we're looking for, well, we're looking for cash investment for sure, but to the extent that you know people interested in buying or selling art, to the extent that you have contacts at museums that would take our phone call directly rather than having to make a, a blind call, we'd be happy for those introductions as well. But uh, our goal is to scale and our goal is to scale with some cash. Wonderful, well, thank you again and we appreciate your time and efforts. And without further ado, we're gonna move on to our next presentation. So we have invited SCORE to come and talk about their program, their business academy that's coming up. So we have Bob Zifferman from SCORE. He's gonna have some time to do a presentation and then we'll open it up for Q&A once he wraps up. It's all yours, Bob. Bob, you're on mute. And it was such a good opening, too, on top of it. So, hey, good morning, everybody. Um, appreciate the opportunity to talk with you this morning. Uh, Josiah, it was a great presentation. I really enjoy it. Uh, that's really changing the, changing the way biz, people are going to do business, uh, which we're seeing a lot in, in SCORE. So thanks so much for that time. Deidre and Sandra, thank you for the time to present. Uh, this morning and I want to make this informative and uh, obviously keep it interactive as much as possible. So I'm the SCORE Fort Worth Chairman um, 
and basically our, basically what's the SCORE story is, is that we were formed in 1964. The SCORE Fort Worth chapter was formed in 1965. In that time frame, we've helped 11 million people in pursuit of their business goals of starting a business or maintaining their present business. And our mission is, is very simple, is to foster vibrant small businesses that are in, in place today or looking to start up through mentoring and education. And I'll explain a little bit how Fort Worth does that specifically. Our vision is that every person has the support necessary to thrive as a small business, specifically. And then our values, which is probably most important to us, is that number one, our clients matter, our success of our clients matter. In SCORE Fort Worth, we have about a, 92, a little bit over 92% customer satisfaction level, or what we call net promoter score, of the value that they've gotten out of our services. Small business matters. Obviously, we all know that employee growth in the United States is all based on small businesses and that every large company was a small business at one time, and our ongoing growth is dependent on small businesses. Uh, experience. Uh, we have a variety of different experience within our, our chapter and all chapters, from an industry experience, being aerospace, defense, technology, medical, restaurant, um, to uh, more of a horizontal experience, being CPA, sales backgrounds, logistics people that are here volunteering for us. Relationships are key to us, and relationships are not only relationships with us and our, our people that we mentor or provide education to, but our relationships are also with organizations such as One Million Cups, okay? So we can jointly work together, or Spark Yards, or the Chamber of Commerce is that locally, or any other business networking. Those are relationships that are very important to us also. Diversity. Um, SCORE is very focused on providing diversity within our own ranks because we want to truly represent who we're mentoring to and represent more of that population. So diversity in regards to ethnic background, diversity in regards to gender is very important to us, and, and diversity in regards to age. So people of all ages can help in SCORE uh, in regards to volunteering their time, whether it's only two hours a month or it could be a couple of hours a week. So diversity is key. It's something we'll continue to strive at. We're getting better. We're not quite there yet. And then finally, which is true with all small businesses, but also with us, is lifelong uh, learning matters. Once you stop thinking, once you start thinking you know everything or you don't have to learn anything more, okay, you're going to dry up and die. All right. I come from the technology side of the world. All right. Uh, I did that for over 40 years. That's the one thing I learned very early is that technology changes very quickly. And if you're not constantly on top of it, you will be irrelevant. And that's true with small businesses. So as you progress, just keep in mind, you don't know everything and there's always something new to learn. Now, specifically within SCORE, this is what we do. We basically do three things. We provide free, confidential, one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Um, and we do that, we used to do that face-to-face -face with 11, with, but now we're doing it basically all virtual. Uh, we offer low or no cost business training. So again, those used to be mostly face-to-face -face training sessions and now they're all virtual. And then lastly, we offer over 300 business templates that, that for free that you can get off of our website that anybody can utilize. And it's how to, you know, it could be a template like a business plan. It could be a marketing plan, an operational plan. It could be profit and loss statements, cash flow statements. So those are all available for the SCORE website. And again, just feel free to log into that website, which is uh, it's fortworth.score.org. And I also show it at the end of my uh, presentation here this morning, but those are all available. And also just uh, go through our, a lot of the free webinars we have. So we have probably an inventory over 300 webinars that are free and that's also available on our website on a variety of different topics, from business planning, the social media, um, et cetera. So those are the three things we do. Now, the one thing, you know, we, we all are aware of what happened in March and uh, we've all been very sensitive to that. And the one thing that I, I think that's coming out very strongly here that it's, I do a lot of reading or I try to do a lot of reading and I read a lot with uh, an individual named John Maxwell. I don't know if anybody's familiar with John Maxwell. He's written a variety of different author. He's an author that's written a variety of different books on leadership. And in today's world and how we think of small business, I think his quote is probably more applicable than ever before. It's always applicable, but I think today is even more applicable. And basically the quote is, the pessimist complains about the wind, 
The optimist expects it to change. The leader adjusts the sales. Okay. So as a small business owner, what are you doing? Are you complaining about what's happening? Are you thinking, oh, don't worry, it's going to go back to normal, whatever that might be? Or are you saying this is the new economic realities of today and we need to adjust the sales? Josiah has got, for example, a business model that can really be disruptive in the marketplace. He's adjusting the sales, right? He'll continue to have to adjust the sales as he goes forward. You as a small business leader also have to adjust the sales. So that's where our focus is, specifically within Tarrant County, just to give you some demographics or background on us, we have 70 score volunteers, all right? We, have, we are doing today over 160 mentoring sessions per month with small businesses. That has actually increased by 30% since uh, the pandemic. We have 11 mentoring locations in Tarrant County, not necessarily real relevant today because we're almost all virtual, but we are located at the back and we're located throughout Tarrant County. And we are still doing some face-to-face -face mentoring. If you feel comfortable in doing it and our mentors feel comfortable in doing it. We are doing 12 to 18 workshops per month. And that goes up, that went up from about eight workshops before the pandemic, because we can now do it virtually. Um, so we've increased the workshops. We've kind of customized our workshops to address what's happening with COVID and re reinventing the business. In 2019, we assisted in starting 186 new businesses in Tarrant County. And we helped in starting, uh, creating 418 new jobs in the 2019 in Tarrant County. And we also host the Premier Women's Entrepreneur Business Forum for the last three years. The next one will be in the May timeframe of 2021. So that's a quick overview of SCORE. What I wanted to talk a little bit about, we talked about relationships matter, partnerships matter. And uh, one thing that we decided to do um, probably about two, uh, two months ago now, is that traditionally there's been a lot of business planning competitions in our area um, or, you know, events to help you kind of better handle your business from a training perspective. Those things have somewhat fallen off, okay? People have pulled back a little bit. Some organizations have pulled back. And we decided that now's not the time to pull back in this type of training that's needed. So SCORE came up with, SCORE Fort Worth has sponsored, is sponsoring what we call the SCORE Business Academy. And really it's focused towards small businesses that are in business more than a year, have annual revenue of two million or less, agree to attend at least 80% of the classes and meet with a SCORE mentor monthly, all right? And it is a virtual training class. It is starting October 3rd and it will go for five Saturdays. It will go from 9.30 to 11.30 and it will address a variety of different topics from financials, how to understand a financial statement, the importance of financials, the importance of cash flow to marketing and positioning of your, market, of your product, and how to better, better penetrate your market, to HR, to social media, how do I utilize social media. So we have a variety of different topics. It is being sponsored by Score Fort Worth and Prosperity Bank. The application timeframe is, ends this Friday, September 5th, um, and it is a free program. So you need to be in North Texas, ideally. You need to be, again, uh, in business more than a year. You need to have revenues less than $2 million. Uh, and you need to be in North Texas. But it's free. We'll review the applicants, uh, give us a week or so after that time frame, and then we'll announce the people that are part of the program. And as part of that partnership, as part of delivering this effectively, is that we want to make sure the people out of this program, the small businesses, can effectively present their company, as Deidre would say. Um, so we have partnered with, with uh, One Million Cups as part of this training package that they will, be, they will get involved in One Million Cups and they will at least get involved in one session to kind of listen to what it's all about and then another session to actually present their, present their, their company, their organization. So I want to thank I want to thank One Million Cups for their support on this. Um, we know that's very important. It's, you know, as you can have the best ideas in the world, you can have the best thought process, you can have the best business plan, but if you can't communicate the value and why, the why of it, it really doesn't matter. Uh, so with that, that's kind of what I had. I want to kind of shut up and, you know, open it up to any questions or clarifications anybody needs. 
Thank you, Bob. That is awesome. And thank you for all of your work you do with SCORE. Uh, we really appreciate it. Okay. For any attendees, if you could put your questions in the Q&A and for the organizers in the chat, please. Bob, can you put that screen back up that you just had, the last one? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. The one with your contact information. Oh, sorry. So people can. Thank you. Okay, on that program that you have, and that is for young businesses that have already launched, is that correct? In business for at least a year. All right, we're waiting for questions. I got one. So how many slots? I know you said that the deadline to register was um, September 5th. So how many slots do you have open? Uh, 25. Okay, and from uh, Amy Razor, um, letting you know that uh, the Better Business Bureau would love to be a part of supporting your efforts, Bob, and let's chat. She's left her information in the chat box for you. Great, thank you. So is there an application? <clears throat> How long is the application process? Uh, the application is pretty simple. It's a page and a half. It's very basic, high level questions, not a lot of details. I mean, we're not asking for a complete business plan. We're asking for a brief overview of the business, not a lot of detail on it. We're not asking for any financials. Um, pretty sim simple, straightforward, Deidre. It's got a name, address, more contact information, and, and a high level overview of the, of the business is all we're asking for. Okay, and from Evelyn Nichols, uh, will it be a mix of profit and nonprofit selected? Yes, this is not exclusive to just for profit. This is nonprofit and for profit. Good point. And so those, <clears throat> I'm sorry, so those that complete the academy, tell them what they get, Bob. <laughs> well, uh, we're finalizing that, Teacher, right now, so I don't want to misstate. But thank you for setting me up on that. Um, no, I'm kidding. So we're, uh, we're working with Spectrum right now uh, for some things um, that we're gonna have for, and those are gonna be for the top three. This is for the top three, okay? What, what everybody gets out of this is really what the real nugget is, is that I can better run my business, okay? So that's what you get. So I've always struggled, and again, I'm a salesperson, I've always struggled with giving gifts out at the end of something, okay? Uh, because as a business, the real value you're trying to get is, how to make my business better, all right? And that's what we're trying to get to. Now, we are providing some in-kind services that haven't been finalized yet. Uh, and those will be, you know, Spectrum is gonna be providing something uh, in regards to free advertising. Josiah, to talk about kind of getting your, your business out there, right? So they're gonna, or, or discount, discounted advertising that they're gonna offer on their stations. It's not gonna be free, it's gonna be discounted. Um, we're working with a, a lawyer uh, that will be providing free legal services. And again, for the top three, we're working with a business consultant that's kind of stepped up and willing to give some time to help. Uh, and we're looking at a few other, few other organizations to provide in-kind services right now, but that's where we're at. That's awesome because it's all about what's in it for me. So even if you go through the program and you don't make the top three, you still walk away with valuable information. Right. I've heard a lot of other participants that participated in the um, business plan competition, and they said even though they didn't get the top three, they got valuable information. So that's ROI, investing in yourself for your business. So I just wanted to bring that point across. Thank you. And Evelyn says it's a great opportunity to just learn the process. I am constantly on the wheel moving to be better, and I would be open to donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I went to the doctor the other day and he said my blood pressure is high. So I'm giving up all sweets and desserts. I'm kidding. Um, sure, we'll, we'll try to get donuts virtually, but it have to be virtual, right? Now we're trying to do, um, we're trying to do our grad, quote unquote graduation, whatever in person, which would be targeted for the, uh, a week or so before Thanksgiving. We're gonna to try to do that in person. 
but it kind of depends on where we're at there so that we can actually kind of do more of a network and get to meet each other, interact uh, much easier than we can obviously through virtual. But I'll, I'll try to do the donuts. She I'm says, happy. um. <laughs> okay. Uh, she also wants to know, will you have to pitch? Will you have to pitch? Yes, you have to present as DJ would say. Yes, yeah, it's, and the reason we're doing that is, um, well, there's a variety of reasons. What I already mentioned was that, hey, if you can't communicate your company and your value and, and why is it important, then who can, right? If Josiah can't, can't relay the messaging, okay, of his company or somebody there, who can, all right? You know it better. You know it better than anybody else, right? So that's, that's, the, number, that's the number one thing. But, uh, you, know, if, you know, if you're looking to investors, if you're looking to go talk to a bank, it's, it's helpful to be able to present it, right, in an effective way. Um, and then it it's always goes back to, um, and I'm a big fan of it, I don't necessarily a big fan of the term of the elevator pitch, but it's, it's to get off of the, to learn how to, which I think One Million Cups does very well, is to learn to get off of the, the what you do or how you do it and talk about why you do it, right? Because nobody, nobody really, I mean, when it gets down to it, nobody really cares what you do, right, as a business. Maybe a little shocking, but what they care about is how does that business help me, right? What is the benefit of that business to me? So uh, we could talk about technologies, which I come from, and talk about all the different technology techniques. And Josiah did a great job in not doing that today, by the way. But he talked about more of the benefits. What is the benefit to the end, the person buying the product, okay? Whether it's the, supply, the, art, the art supplier or the buying of the art itself. So in these presentations, it's important to get off of, hey, this is what we do, all right? This is how we do it. We're kind of what I started with today, as a matter of fact. But um, to get off of that, but why is it important? Because nobody cares what you do, all right? They care, how does it affect me, okay? What's your why? That's what it's all about. So I think presentations help relate that because if we're not comfortable presenting, we're always going to fall back to what we do. You know, what this I do, I do this, I do this, I do that. And it comes down to a, a so what. So when I use a so what, and if, I, you, if I could digress just a second, tell a quick story that happened to me that's still in the grain in my mind 40 years later, 40 years later. I actually, I was in technology. Uh, I sold and I was uh, actually selling mini computers way back when in the early 70s, and calculators door to door um, to commercial accounts, to small contractors, give you an idea, in the city of Chicago. And we had to, one day I had to go knock on doors, which we did every day, basically. That was cold calling, most of ineffective means. But I was knocking on doors. I had a calculator under my arm, and I kept knocking to see if somebody would allow me to come in to present this calculator, all right? And, I, you know, of course, I got rejection all day long. Until about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, one person, a guy, guy that's been in business probably 30 years, sitting in his office all by himself, said, yeah, come on in and talk to me. So I came in and I started to present and demonstrate this calculator to him. And I got to tell you, I nailed it. I, you know, I went to school, I learned everything about that features function and everything it does. And I nailed it and I went out for 20 minutes. And I was so dang proud of myself because I nailed every function feature. And the guy looked at me kind of sat back in his chair and said, you know, all I can say to you is so what? And my heart just sank. I was like, oh man, maybe I'm not worth, maybe I should be doing this. But I never forgot that point is so what? What does it mean to me? It doesn't mean a dang thing. So I, I go back to so what? Every time, a lot of times I still do it. I did it here early on is I'm thinking back in my mind, so what? So as a, as a presenter, as a company owner, when you talk to somebody, you do an elevator pitch or value proposition is so what? What does it mean to them? So I, dig, I digress a little bit on that, Deidre, I apologize, but obviously I have a passion on, on how we present companies and the need for presentations and effective presentations. And she may have asked that because a lot of people have a fear of speaking in public. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just want to iterate that if you don't do it, who will? Right. right? And so, just as a clarification, you'll be teaching how to present as part of the academy? Uh, well, you know, we're going to kind of defer some of that to One Million Cups to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. Ours will be, I mean, I'm going to be the, doing the sales and marketing piece. 
you, as you can tell by my passion, I'll talk a little bit about that and how to pitch or present. Uh, but, you know, one of the things we, when we did this uh, last year, we felt like we didn't get enough training for those people on how to present. So that's why we're actually looking at one million cops to help us also. Great. Now, keep in, keep in mind too, and the one thing I want to reiterate too is you're also getting mentoring from us. So if you want to come in and you do it one million cups, you want, you want to present it over and over again to get familiar, you have mentors, score mentors that are more willing to sit and listen and give you input too. So don't, don't be, I mean, presentations are tough. I mean, it, it's been so long ago now and I can do them, you know, pretty easily, unfortunately, that's not always good. But, you know, I was scared for three or four years as a salesperson, all right? I could talk one-on-one, -on -one, but when I went to a group, I just froze up. It's tough. It's hard to get through. I don't know an easy answer to it. Some people can do it naturally. I could not. Um, but I do know the only way you're going to get better is keep doing it. All right, thank you. And Evelyn says great information and thank you. And Joe wants to remind everybody about Toastmasters. He's got the information there in the chat box for everyone. Awesome okay. sauce. So if anyone has any community announcements, please put those in the chat box so everybody can see. Bob, thank you so much for that awesome presentation. We wanted to tie you down for a while to get uh, information on SCORE. So anyone have any other community announcements? You're welcome to put those in the chat box. Thank you, Dennis. Okay, well, without further ado, I guess we're gonna get ready to close up. Thank you to our presenters. Josiah, Bob, thank you so much. We really love this opportunity to be able to learn more about you, your endeavors that you have going on. And without further ado, please tune in every Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. where we help grow our entrepreneur community with resources, education, and connections. Sandra, you have anything you wanna add? No, ma'am. All righty. Thank you, got it all. Thank you, guys. See you next time. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Deidre. Yes, sir. Stay on for a minute. Okay. Let me stop. Mm.